Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you a very excellent game played by me, surprisingly, and it has to do, and I have to say this is probably one of the best games I've played, and I think that I've, I've been watching a lot of videos lately that try and learn how to really connect my pieces, I've been learning a lot from Bobby Fischer's game, so I hope you guys enjoy and I hope you actually learn something too. Um, so the game starts off, pawn e4, e5. Knight f3, d6, and this is the Philidor's opening, or our defense, I'm sorry. Now there's some common things. People like to bring their pawn up. Some like to bring their bishop up. There's a lot of common lines, and I decided to do the bishop. I really do like attacking the weakness, if you've seen any other of my videos. He now, he decides to bring his queen. Now there's a few common things. Some is to bring the knight here, attacking the pawn. Some is to bring the knight here, which is actually really a blunder. Some may even bring the bishop up, but that's just suicide. So he decides to bring his queen, kind of trying to alleviate the pressure from my bishop, which is actually a pretty decent idea. But it's fine. I decide to attack the center. And he decides to pin down my knight. He says, hey, you know what? I want to win that pawn. And it's kind of... You know, you have to always choose, you know, what's what's best in this situation. Do you want to hold on to the knight? And, you know, a lot of people, they may go like, oh, well, I'll push my pawn up. You're not going to take my knight. But then he does. It's kind of a wasted move. So you kind of want to play the in-between move. Like, you know he's going to take this knight or else he wouldn't have brought it down here. So you might as well just develop your pieces while he's going to go ahead and do that anyway. So while he when he takes, you can take back. Now I have two attackers on this weakness, so it really kind of helps me out. And not only that, I developed a piece. Now he decides to kind of alleviate the pressure from my queen that was attacking. But that's not a problem, because now I'm going to alleviate some of that pressure. Now if he, take, if he were to um, take with his pawn, he's kind of leaving a weakness in this file for the king. And it doesn't look like he's going to be able to castle on the king's line at king side anytime soon because of this bishop. And if, if he takes with this uh, pawn here, there's really going to be nothing that can attack this bishop anytime soon. So he's not going to have to be castling anytime in the future. If he takes with this pawn here, well, then he's also going to be having more pressure on this right now. And it's not going to be good news for him. So he, he shouldn't, I wouldn't agree with taking with the queen. I would just kind of say, hey, you know, Whatever, I'm not going to do anything about this, but um, he decides to take with the queen, which I don't know if anybody would agree with that. I don't think it's a good idea. And it's a big mistake, I'm about to show you why. Whenever a queen's out in the game, you know, a lot of people consider it like a valuable piece, so they don't want to lose it. So, in, in, a, in a sense, you can gain tempo, or in other words, like more uh, turns, free turns, by chasing it around. And... That's what I do. Now the queen moves around, and he goes here. Now he is attacking my bishop. Now here's the thing. I could bring my pawn up, but then he's just going to move in a spot that I really don't want him to be. And I kind of want to win the queen. I don't want him to retreat, because right now, um, I believe he's up in material, and I don't want that to continue. So I decide to just go ahead and gambit off my bishop in hope of castling. Now when he takes the bishop, I chase the queen away. Now he has a few spots he can go, but he really kind of wants to defend his king, so he wants to bring that back. Um, so now I bring my bishop, uh, my uh, knight here, and the idea here is to attack and fork the king. So he kind of has to defend this. If he brings his queen all the way back here, that's a passive move. You know, he also wants to defend here, so he wants to bring him right here. <coughs> But if anybody is watching this that kind of knows what they're doing, they realize that he just created a fork right here between his king and his uh, queen. That was kind of the idea of my bringing the knight here. Now, he has two attackers on this, and I only have one. So I kind of need to do something about this pressure. So the best move to me is actually this move right here. Now, I want you to keep in mind something. If he were to take with his uh, with his pawn, then I can move my knight here checking the king as well as uh winning the um uh, winning the queen with my with my uh my knight I mean I'm sorry my rook and if he were to take let's say with this then I would take with my bishop 
Okay. And if he were to take back with his pawn, then I would come right here and win the queen. So right now he cannot attack this pawn with both of these. Remember, this knight is going to t attack the queen if one of these two pawns move. And also, I will be able to fork the king and the queen. So he's like, you know what? I don't want to deal with that right now. So he decides to bait bishop and try and put an extra defender on this. Because, you know, right now this is a big weakness. And he sees that. So right now I have two attackers on there. So he's like, I need to get more attackers. So now he has one, two, three attackers on this. Or defenders, really. <clears throat> Now, I decided to bring my rook here. This is kind of pinning down this. If this pawn were to ever move, this bishop would be pinned down. <clears throat> and he, now, also, he could try and castle, but if he moves his knight, well, then he's going to get rid of an, a, a defender. So, it's not a good idea to do that. So, he decides to bring his knight. It's like, hey, you know what? If you're not going to... He, he's like, you know what? He's going to have to castle on the queen side, and that's actually probably his best move right now he wants to go ahead and castle and get rid of all this pressure on him and not only that he's kind of attacking this pawn saying hey you know what if you're not going to move this pawn i'm going to attack it but then i do a move and i want you to really pause the video <clears throat> and i want you to think if you i'm going to uh, i'm going to tell you the move and the move i did to me was probably the best move and i think that if you disagree that's that's fine but to me, I want you to think, what would be the best move? And remember, the the objective I have, at least, is to win the queen. And what what way could I do that? Could I could I take with the pawns? No, no. Maybe I could move my pawn up. Well, I'll tell you what you have to do. And this is what I do. It looks kind of like a blunder. Like, why would you do that move? You know, he basically just sacrificed your bishop. Now, he needs to really pay attention. If he just gives in to his greed... He's going to lose the game. So, you know, his best move, in my opinion, would have actually been to attack his uh, the pawn with his knight. Um, but then again, I, if the game would continue, I would probably sacrifice a rook to get the queen, which would probably be okay. Um, but he decides to give in to temptation and just take it. Now, it looks like that's a good move, but here's why that wasn't such a good move. Because when the pawn takes, now I'm threatening the bishop. He doesn't want to lose that bishop. Or he can't, actually. He can't even... See, he needs to do something about this. Because if I take right here, um, he can't do... If I were to take right here, he's going to lose the queen. Because <clears throat> he could move um, the king. Like, here's what I mean. I, I don't like uh, clicking on things because it messes up the uh, game. But uh, anyway, so let's say he were to not take this. Well, I could bring my rook here, checking the queen, and then winning the knight for or winning the queen for free. So he needs to be careful. But he decides to go ahead and take because he's like, okay, well, I don't want. I see sees this, but then here comes the move that we talked about. It's the knight here pinning or uh, forking the king and the queen, and he has to move the king. If he he can't move the bishop because my my rook here is completely forking it. So he moves the king, and I win the queen. Now he takes back with this king. This is also a big mistake. Because now I can fork the king and the knight. Now, even though I won the queen, I still need to be careful. Because right now, he is kind of even in material. Is you know I think the queen's worth nine. And this right here is nine points. So uh, right now, it's even in material. And I need to actually you know get as much lead as I can now that I took that queen. So he moves the king. I take the knight. And he brings the knight here, and he pro he wants to attack this pawn because it's kind of undefended. So I need to bring my king up. That way he can't do that. And I, I want to kind of like immobilize all his pieces. As you can see, his bishop can't move anywhere either. If his bishop, let's say, moves here to attack my queen, well, then I can just bring my queen here and fork the king and the uh, rook. So he needs to be careful. Um, so really doesn't have anything he can do. He could bring his rook out, but then I would win the pawn, and then I would eventually win the bishop. So he decides to kind of give his king some more room to run around. And then I decide to go ahead and win the bishop, since he wasn't going to do anything. Now, here's why I win the bishop. If you know he were to say, let's, let's say he were to move the bishop, well, then I would attack the rook. Let's say he moves the rook, um back to defend the bishop well the thing is though if he were to do that 
I'm just going to win the pawn. And, you know, and not only that, I would pin down the uh, the bishop. I think that probably would have been his best move, though, given how he wouldn't lose as much material. So he decides to move the king instead, which was kind of a mistake. And now he's kind of panicking, I'm guessing. So now I win the bishop. This is check. He moves. I check him again. He moves here. Now I check him again. This time I'm forking the king and the knight. So he moves. I take the, the knight. So now he's really down in material. And this is pretty much game over for him. He decides to move. And he wants to... Now the reason why he wants to be careful right now is because he, I'm trying to fork this rook and the king. So he needs to be careful. It's where he moves. Let's say he were to move, you know his king somewhere he, he needs to put his king in a really good spot so he moves back i bring it back one more time hoping that he'll move to his or to move to the right that way i can fork them both but he decides to move down and i realize this this is like a cat and mouse game so i kind of need to get make him come to my side to have more attackers so i bring my rook here now he could um you know bring his uh king back which would seem logical but it's really not because then i could move my Rook over here, it's a discover check, and I'm winning the rook. So, he moves, and then I decide to put him in check more. Now he cannot return back to where it's back down to his 7th rank. So he decides to block this. It isn't really blocking, because now I can go here. Now he he could go up, but then I would just bring my queen up, and then it would pretty much be game over after that. He decides to bring his king down. As a check, he can't go anywhere. He moves back. I bring a check one more time. He takes. Now, it's pretty much game over if you haven't tell. I mean, there's really nothing to commentate. I'm just basically chasing him around. And that's checkmate. But basically, you know, I think you always want to keep an eye out on the attacker. How many attackers and how many defenders. Um, I can't remember how far back it was. Let's see. I think it was around uh, right here. Now, when I attacked with my bishop to kind of, you know, bait him. You know, the whole idea is to remove attackers and defenders. You know, you always want to keep an eye out. You know, you don't want to just look at the board and kind of be clueless. You know, the, the biggest weakness right now is this thing. You need to hone in on these weaknesses. So if you if you can sacrifice a beast to gain <clears throat> more control of the weakness, it's all right. <clears throat> anyway, sorry, I'm a little sick. Uh, anyway, have a good day. And this is David. Bye.